This is the first video lecture for section 1.8 on bin packing and scheduling. In this lecture, I'll give you a brief overview of what the bin packing problem is. So in the bin packing problem, we're given a list of numbers called weights, and these weights represent objects of various sizes that need to be packed into bins that have a particular capacity. So the capacity is the total amount of weight that each bin can hold. And the goal is to pack the weights into the smallest number of bins possible. Now, there are a lot of examples where this could come into play. So we could imagine putting groceries into bags at the grocery store, or we might have objects coming down a conveyor belt that need, need to be packed for shipping. We could have a construction plan that calls for small boards of various lengths, and you need to know how many long boards to order from the lumber yard. Or you could have tour groups of various sizes that need to be assigned to buses so that the groups are not split up. So lots of different ways that we can imagine this bin packing problem in the real world. So as an example, let's imagine that we have this list of weights, 13, 8, 10, 12, 21, 6, 11, and 14, and we've got bins of capacity 25. And let's not think about having an algorithm or any sort of plan, but let's just sort of play around and see what we can come up with for how to pack these bins, uh, pack these weights into these bins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a list, and let's say bin number 1, bin number 2, and so on and go from there. Bin number three. I'm not sure how many bins I'm going to need, so if I need to have a new bin, I'll just keep adding onto this list. So we know the capacity is 25. So one thing that we might start looking for are ways that we can find weights that add up to 25. And one thing you might notice is that we've got a 13 and we've got a 12, and 13 plus 12 is 25. Having a simple calculator for these kind of problems is helpful just in case you're struggling with the arithmetic. But in this case, I'm going to put the 13 and the 12 into bin number one. And I'm just going to write the numbers separated by commas. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cross out the numbers as I use them so that I don't accidentally use the same number more than once. Now, the next number that I see here is this 8. And so if I think to myself, well, let's see, 8 plus 17, that's 25. But I don't see a 17 on my list. So maybe I'll put the 8 in this bin and I'll just put it together with this 10 that comes next. So 8 and 10 cross those out. And now a useful thing to be keeping track of, and we'll be doing this as we go along, is to keep track of how much space is left in my bin. So 8 plus 10 is 18, and my whole bin had capacity 25. 25 minus 18 is 7. So 7 is how much space is left in bin number 2. And if I look at the next number on my list, which is 21, I certainly don't have room to put that 21 into bin number 2. So instead, I'll put it in a bin number three. That's where I'll put that 21. And again, I used it, so I crossed it off my list. Next up, I've got a six. Now, six fits into bin number two because bin number two has seven capacity left over, and six is less than seven, so I can fit that in. So I'm going to add six onto my list for bin number two and cross that out. Next up, I've got an 11 and a 14. And again, we see, oh, 11 and 14, that adds up to 25. So we'll put those together into bin number four, 11 and 14. And so I've used up all the numbers on my list. And so this is my solution to this problem. So how did we do? Well, one way to measure how well we did with a bin packing problem is to add up all of the weights. So if I add up all of those numbers on that list that they gave me, I get 95. And each bin had capacity 25. So if I take the 95, if I were to take the weights and split them up, right? So we're, we're imagining, you know, we can't necessarily take this object and break it into two pieces. But if we could, if we evenly divided the weight among those four, uh, th those, those bins of capacity 25, 95 divided by 25 is a little less than four. So four is really the best that we could have done, right? So we could not have gotten this into three bins of capacity 25 because three times 25 is only 75, and that's not enough. We need room for 95 total weights, and so three bins is not enough. Four bins was theoretically possible based on this division problem, and in fact, we were able to pack those weights into four bins. So the idea that we're gonna be thinking about is that the less space left over there is in a bin, the better the objects fit. And so ideally, we want to do what we did a couple different times in our example, is to have a perfect fit where the objects are in the bins and there's zero space left over. In general, we're not always going to be able to do that, but the basic idea is to try to have as little space left over as possible.
So next time we're going to start thinking about algorithms, several different algorithms actually, for solving this bin packing problem. And as we've seen before, these algorithms will not be guaranteed to find the best answer, but they are much faster than the brute force method, which would be considering all of the different possible ways that you could put these weights into those bins. So that's what we'd be doing in the next lecture.